This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. <coughs> okay, I think I'm ready. This is... This Are you okay? Is, Are you doing yoga? This, I am trying to do Charles Spurgeon. We don't have a recording of the man's voice, so you can't judge me. I'm trying to come up with something that sounds smart. That's a stretch. Sounds sort of British, and yet sounds sort of authoritative. And yet warm and gentle all at the same time. So, for your consideration, my impression of... Charles Haddon Spurgeon. I have heard another say, I am tormented with horrible thoughts. Wherever I go, blasphemies steal in upon me. Frequent... Eh! Eh! How did he do that? That was amazing, and he preached to so many people. Charles Spurgeon talking about those people who struggle with thoughts. Blasphemous thoughts. Streamer thoughts, the, the, the uncontrolled notions that come through their noggins that they wish would go away forever, but they won't. And these people, therefore, struggle with knowing that they are Christ. This is another area for people who struggle with assurance. If I'm Christ's, if, if I belong to him, why do I have these thoughts? Why do I get these streamer ideas, these nonsensical notions, and these blasphemous beliefs? Why do they keep popping up? I can't possibly be a Christian. Hold on. You could possibly be a Christian because stupid thoughts don't mean you're not saved. It means you have stupid thoughts. And you might be of the personality type that you tend to be a little bit obsessive compulsive. Not to use the DSM-5, but you've got one of those brains, you latch onto something and it just stays there and you can't get off of it. And you can't cause your brain to shift gears and get out of the blasphemous gear that you're grinding away in. Maybe Charles Spurgeon will be helpful for you. <clears throat> My impression of Todd Friel, not doing an impression of Charles Spurgeon. I've heard people say I'm tormented with horrible thoughts, blasphemy stealing upon me wherever I go. At my work, a dreadful suggestion forces itself upon me. And even on my bed, I'm startled from my sleep by whispers of the evil one. I cannot get away from the horrible temptation. Spurgeon said, friend, I know what you mean. For I myself have been hunted by this wolf. Charles Spurgeon isn't our savior, but I don't know of anybody who argues that Charles Spurgeon was not saved. He was the prince of preachers in the 19th century. This man, I don't think anybody would think was a false convert. And do you hear what he said? I, I know what you're talking about. Been there, done that. I have those thoughts running through my brain. A man, he writes, might as well hope to fight a swarm of flies with a sword as to master his own thoughts when they are not when they are set on by the devil. A poor tempted soul, assailed by satanic suggestions, is like a traveler I've read of, about whose head and ears and whole body there came a swarm of angry bees. He could not keep them off, nor escape from them and abominable thoughts which Satan pours into your soul. But yet I would remind you of the scripture before us. When we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus knew where we were and where we should be. He saw that we could not overcome the prince of the power of the air. He knew that we, would, we should be greatly worried by him. But even then, when he saw us in that condition, he died for the ungodly. Cast the anchor of your faith upon this. You have those thoughts you hate. Yes, you should war against them. But when you fail, even over and over again, as long as you are in an active war, not a passive disengagement, but you're in the active war, Cast your hope on Christ. Stop basing your assurance on how you are doing as a soldier in battle against spiritual temptations. Cast your hope on Christ. That's where the person who struggles with assurance needs to go. That's where we all need to be. That's the solution. 
Will you have increased victory over it? You, you likely will. But even if you don't, or it is a lifelong struggle, if you are only looking at your failures, you're only looking at your blasphemous thoughts, you are doomed to despair. You will never have joy, 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 joy down in your heart. Cast your hope on Christ, the anchor of your faith. The devil himself cannot tell you that you are not ungodly. Believe then that Jesus died even for such as you are. Remember Martin Luther, his way of cutting the devil's head off with his own sword. Oh, said the devil to Martin Luther, you're a sinner. Yes, Martin Luther responded. I know that, and I know that Christ died to save sinners. Thus, Luther smote him with his own sword. Hide you in this refuge and keep you there. Christ died for the ungodly. If you stand to that truth, your blasphemous thoughts, which you have not strength to drive away, will go away of themselves. For Satan will see that he is answering no purpose by plaguing you with them. If you hate these thoughts, said Spurgeon, they're injections of the devil. They're not yours. He's responsible, not you. If you strive and you, against the devil, he'll drive you to despair or at least keep you from trusting in Jesus. The poor diseased woman could not come to Jesus for the press of the fringe of the Lord's garment. She was healed. Do you the same? What is your hope? What is your assurance if you struggle with blasphemous thoughts? Cast your cares upon him. Throw yourself at his feet and stay there. Now, what about sins? What about sinful thoughts? That, 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 that this is different than the blasphemous thoughts. Just these things that, that invade your brain that somehow, I don't know how, the devil places there. Do I believe that you should repent of those thoughts, even if they are somehow given to us by the devil? Absolutely. Because I want to take responsibility for any hint of sin that comes from my reeking carcass. Nevertheless, if you want them to be driven out, fill your brain so full with the truth that Christ died for the ungodly, there's just no room for these dopey thoughts. There's another man, another woman who struggles with assurance because they've got an ongoing struggle with a particular sin. Ladies, you tend to have your bag. Men tend to have another. What's yours? Hmm? What's the ongoing sin? So many people, they fear, I have been battling this and it doesn't stop. I keep fill in the blank. I keep gossiping. I keep having a fear of man. I keep having a pride problem. I keep lusting. I keep coveting. You know what that sounds like? It sounds again like Paul in Romans chapter 7. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death? And what is his response? Thanks be to God for the Lord Jesus Christ. He drove out despair by filling his noggin with truth. He removed Romans 7. He conquered Romans 7. By preaching Romans 8, and you should too. I know there's a concern that we've got many false converts. So examine yourself. See if you're in the faith. Did you repent and put your trust in Jesus Christ? Then you're his. Now, if you happen to be one who said, yeah, 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 I, I, I repent and put my trust in Jesus Christ. And yeah, I sin. What's the big whoop? You're a problem. And you've got a problem. Because that's not the Christian response. But if you are agonizing over your soul because you're concerned of its status, because you keep on battling sin, keyword is battle, you're his and he's yours. And you need to stop the race in your brain. You need to mortify those thoughts by replacing them with better thoughts, higher thoughts. And here's a word for you, rest, trust and rest, and have peace. Now, this leads us down another avenue. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not comfortable with that. Then I would say to you, whoa, 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 what's really going on here? What's the problem? Why are you struggling to be secure in Christ's love for you? What's the issue? What's, what's the problem? Hmm? Better figure that out because that's not where God wants you. He didn't die for you while you were yet sinning so that you could not enjoy him forever. That's your chief aim, to, to get saved and to enjoy God forever. And that brings him great glory. If you are struggling to enjoy the rest that he offers for your soul, dive in there, figure it out, what's keeping you from it, and you better knock down that hurdle, and you can. And the way to do it is with the promises of God that he died for the ungodly, and that promise goes for you. If you are in Christ because you've repented and trusted, it is not just a positional, okay, good, then I'm all set for eternity. No, no, no. He wants you to enjoy him forever. So why don't you just rest? This is Wretched Radio. Well, thank you, Carol. I I can't wait to try some of that low-sodium peppermint lasagna. Sounds delicious. Let's get to the weather, shall we? As you can see, we are going to have a massive warm front moving its way up the eastern seaboard, expecting temperatures upper 90s and low 100s. Unless, of course, you're outside of Christ, then on Judgment Day, it is going to be hot. Back to you, Carol. Not only hot, weeping, gnashing of teeth. And so thirsty, your tongue's going to be stuck to the roof of your mouth. You're just going to wish for a storm to come through, which you folks down in the south can be expecting on Wednesday.